intensive heat treatment on grain seed, these structures are changed at the molecular level. Polysaccharides break down into simple sugars. This actually means that less energy is spent on digestion and more energy is received for the animal's body growth. Thanks to extrusion, we increase the surface area of starch granules and the larger the area, the quicker the reaction, which breaks up amylopectin and amylose. Thus, we more easily obtain glucose, which is the energy needed for growth. Just look at how kids enjoy various snacks, like corn curls. Almost all known baby food and confectionery is manufactured with the use of the extrusion method. The human body is unconsciously looking for products which are easy to absorb. But there is another side to this coin. Now we understand that eating these products in large quantity can lead to obesity, diabetes and microflora changes. Many modern foods contain extruded components. Sweets, instant noodles and soups. Even dairy and meat products are usually manufactured based on extrusion technology. This is called an extruder. And this is the machine that's used for making breakfast cereals. And this re represents extreme cruelty to our grains. And what they do is they make a paste. They soak the grains in, in a little water. They make a paste. They put it in this tank. And then with these side wings closed, they force the grains out this tiny hole at very high temperature and pressure. And depending on the shape of this hole, you, you get a cornflake or a Cheerio or shredded wheat or any of these uh, types of breakfast cereals. Now, Americans eat uh, billions of boxes of cereal every year. This is a huge industry and a very powerful industry. And this industry has convinced the FDA that there's no difference between a grain of wheat, a normal grain of wheat, and a grain of wheat that's been extruded. And if you do a literature search, you will not find a single published paper on this subject, on either animals or humans, on the effects of extrusion, eating extruded grains on their health. I do know, however, of two unpublished studies on extruded grains. One was described in a book called Fighting the Food Giants by Paul Stitt. He worked for a cereal company, and he discovered this study in their files. They had looked at puffed wheat, and they had four groups of rats. The first group of rats got normal wheat and water. The second group of rats got wa uh, water and vitamins. The third group of rats got v uh, water alone. And the fourth group of rats got all of the puffed wheat that they wanted to eat and water. The first group of rats lived over a year. No real health problems. The second group of rats lived for six weeks. There's a lesson right there. We can't live on vitamins alone. The third group of rats died at four weeks. The group of rats that got all the puffed wheat they wanted, they died at two weeks. So two weeks versus a year, extruded wheat versus regular wheat. The second study was done by a man named Lauren Zanier who did not publish it, but he described it to me on the phone. He had three groups of rats. One group of rats was fed uh, normal rat chow. The second group of rats was fed cornflakes, and the third group of rats was fed the box that the cornflakes came in. <laughs> <laughs> the group of rats on the rat chow lived about a year. The group of rats that was given the box lived longer than the group of rats given the cornflakes. The last cornflake rat died on the day the first box rat died. Now, the rats who got the box died of starvation. They lay down in their cages and became listless, and they just died. But the rats who got the cornflakes became agitated and began to run around in their cages and bite each other and have fits and seizures, and they died of convulsions. And then they did an autopsy, and they found lesions. This is abnormalities in the gut and on the nerves. So there was something very toxic to the nervous system about the cornflakes. Now, in my literature search, I did find one study that somehow slipped past the sensors, and it was a, a microscope study where they looked at the proteins in grains. And when they go through this extrusion process, very high heat and high temperature, they are broken up and warped and distorted because they are fragile. And once they get warped and distorted, they become toxic. 
And obviously, in the case of the proteins in grains, they become neurotoxic. The thing about organic grains, or, uh, whole grains first they have more protein, and organic grains have more protein than non-organic grains. So the likelihood is you're going to get more of these toxic, neurotoxic protein fragments in the health food cereals than you would if you were buying Cocoa Puffs in the supermarket. And we have a generation of children who starts out eat, each morning eating these breakfast cereals. Do you think there's a connection between the fact that these kids can't sit, sti in, sit still in school and have behavior problems and can't concentrate and can't learn and these extruded breakfast cereals? 